So hello, thank you very much for being with us, uh, Mr. Arthur Wang from uh, Miniwis, yes. uh, CEO of, of Miniwis from Taiwan, isn't it? Yes. So uh, pleasure to have you here as an expert of um, giving life back to plastic and to trash. Okay. Um, so thank you for being with us. We first will like to know, um, how is this of giving life back to trash? It's always thought of, this is really expensive, you can only do it in big factories and big companies. How is your approach to this? Decentralize. How, it's, it's, um, to be smart is that one of the, when you look at the whole system, the biggest mm. problem is transportation. And the second problem is contamination in the collections. So a lot of people collect the material, trash, say, mm. because it's inconvenient to separate them. So at the end, they put them all together in this big bin. From this big bin, then they have to separate it again, and then the material value decreases. Mm. Then it becomes really hard for us to remanufacture with the material we get. Okay. So the whole idea is decentralization of collections. You want to get the machine as close as the, where the material is being consumed. And you want to transform that material as close from the consumer uh, and transform that into something that's more durable. So you want to take the disposable trash that's uh, only functional for 30 minutes. You want to turn that into something that can be uh, within, let's say, 30 minutes, an hour and a half. You want to turn that into some new material, uh, furniture or building material that can last for three years or 30 years. So, uh, you have talked that you started um, working with construction. Construction has been your first um, big product, and that's what has made you famous around the world. Um, how do you deal of building construction materials and building and doing buildings in places where you couldn't you, you wouldn't think there is big companies like for example you talk about Tibet mm. uh, how you were capable of building a, a recycling um, facility and the possibility to create buildings from trash in uh, Local, Tibet is yeah. uh, so we didn't go to Tibet we went to uh, uh, it's in the Tibetan plateau, first of all, and it's, uh, it's called Zadu. This is the highest township in China. Okay. Um, so, okay. So the whole idea is about local collection and local productions and local, uh, local upcycling and engineering into a building material. Okay. And so what we did is, so what we did is we built the machine designed to be portable. Okay, so we bring the machine on the truck and then we directly take the trash and use the machine on site and remanufacturing them into tiles to build the schools. Okay, so it's, a, it's basically factory on wheel, as simple as that. So this factory on wheel, um, always cost is a thing. How much does it cost to build a factory on wheels like that? But, you know, like we are in the manufacturing business, so we know, uh, so for us, cost is not that much. It's around 120000 for just the machine, okay? But the problem is the machine is cheap, okay? Of, it's just a giant washing machine, giant shredder, okay? A giant dehumidifier and an oven. It cannot cost that much. Just think about it. You buy that in your home, it cannot cost that much. But the key is to power all that industrial machine, okay, with solar. And you want to have all the waste gas capture, you want to have all the waste water being re-recycled, mm -hmm. so it's zero footprint. So this part of the uh, portable factory on wheel is expensive, okay, because you're trying to be zero footprint. Yeah, so that's the, that's the trick, yes. that the part of collecting all the waste because within the production of the things we were, uh, you were discussing that we have a lot of waste and a lot of uh, contamination. Even when we wash our clothes, we are, without knowing, polluting the water. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, 
So you say all of these materials end up also in fashionable things because people think so recycled as something that looks odd, that looks yeah. recycled, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but you say, for example, the 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 jacket, the jacket you're wearing now, that's made out of uh, recycled material. Yes. Uh, so the key to make recycling uh, possible, I think, uh, or upcycling attractive is to make the product attractive, okay? Without being a uh, product sexy, okay? Uh, people is not gonna touch the product or feel uh, or buy the products, okay? So then all that effort, I think is wasted because we don't, we don't buy material for sustainability reason. We buy it for its functional reason. We buy it for the design, we buy it for the looks, we buy it for the vanity of the reason. So for example, Actually, everything I wear, we design and we make the material ourselves from the cell phone case all the way to the watch, all the way to the shoe, all the way to the jacket. It's all from the material we created. But then we work with different designers to make it sexy. Mm -hmm. right? So for example, this is designed by one of our um, uh, Italian friends and this is designed by a Taiwanese designer. Right? This is designed by Nike design team right? and this is designed by another one of our um, uh, Taiwanese colleagues uh, to make this phone case. So it's through these creative professionals um, utilizing these technology to make these things somewhat attractive where you might want to buy it in their second life again. I'm thinking uh, because in the case of Asia, of course, you have the advantage that most of the products that are consumed throughout the world are produced Yes. within Asia. We don't have that sort of industry here, or we have it in a very limited range. Uh, for example, in the case of Costa Rica, we have medical production, uh, medical stuff, production, yeah. um, and things like that. But we have more, uh, for example, lots of waste in pineapple um, fiber, for example, mm -hmm. other, uh, those sorts of things. How can we how do you think a country like us that is not producing those kind of goods uh, can take advantage of this sort of recycling as well? well? Sorry, maybe I don't know Costa Rica well enough, but from what I heard from uh, the colleagues I talked to in Costa Rica, um, Costa Rica is the biggest exporting countries of goods around uh, Central America, right? And I, I, did, I didn't realize you guys actually import recycled material to produce new new things already, you know. So, and you guys, all the a lot of injectors, uh, plastic injectors, plastic manufacturers are in Costa Rica. Okay, so I'm just uh, this is very interesting because, uh, uh, yes, in Asia it does produce for a lot of the world. Okay, mm -hmm. so it does have a lot of more fancier, higher, massive volume technology there. Okay. But however, within your locale, Costa Rica is the producing, uh, the, the biggest production partner in Central America already. So that's mean Costa Rica has a lot of production infrastructure already sitting here. Mm -hmm. And we should take advantage of yes, that. Yes, and we should take advantage of that. Yeah, you were talking, um, you have all the time talk about how making things sexy and attractive. How can we make sexy and attractive also for the people to actually be in the process of recycling, to not throw away our things, to take them to a place to recycle? How can we make it easier for people to be part of this uh, cycle of bringing back to life materials? Okay, so to kickstart this cycle, the whole process has to be sexy in itself, right? So, um, so let's say uh, from the media perspective or even from the fashion perspective, okay, if you can get cool people, okay, or let's, let's not even, the people that emulate, uh, to be able to do that on a regular basis, committed to that, that is already one big step because you're getting sexy people, uh, um, uh, leaders um, to commit to a act of recycling and then people associate that with something sexy something cool right mm. okay and on top of that from that recycling process you want to be able to turn that material with technology into something also sexy people will buy for its own mirror 
mer a uh, merit of good products, of good colors, right? Of good uh, hand feel, good performance. Okay, so there's always three levels of a product. Okay, so to make that sexy, a, a wholesome product. Okay, most environmentalists look at sustainable recycling, all this stuff, as on the environmental level. Unfortunately, environmental level is too far away. People don't realize how close they are. But maybe in Costa Rica, you're very you're closer to oceans, you're closer to the rainforest. So this could be. But for most people, they're not that close to nature, the environment, the sea, right? They have a huge city in yeah, between. Yeah, yeah. They have a huge <laughs> city in between. So they actually don't realize how, how important that impact is. But for most people, people care about just community and their personal uh, desire. Okay. So the most basic level is that that sexiness has to fulfill the, for the community and fulfill for the product level. So fulfill for the community is very easy. It's like every community, they're sexy leaders, right? And for the product itself, everybody sees a sexy car driving by. You know that car is sexy. You don't have to think about it. That's just something you desire, right? So both of these are actually much easier to act. You just go back to your nature and ask yourself the same questions. And I think it will make uh, recycling works. A lot of our students come from the tourism, sustainable tourism career. Um, in terms of tourism, have you dealt with how uh, recycling can also be incorporated in the act of making tourism, of having uh, an experience that makes less impact in, some, in the country you are at? No, for example, right away. Uh, ecotourism, let's say. You gotta have an ecotourism by the beach or the ocean, okay? But you still, hotels do have consumables still, right? For hygiene reasons, right? For hygiene reasons. So can you, can the guest, during his stay, okay, the material he consumed that's going to be thrown away, okay, can it be recycled on site and turn that into a memento or become a construction material for the resort that he's staying in. So that become part of the memory and that become part of a storytelling and that become part of a, the, the soul that you left in mm -hmm. part of that resort. That could be such a beautiful story by itself. Right? Like the room you're sleeping yeah. at was, was made wood. by material of yes. prior guests. Yes, exactly. Or even the dining room that everyone shared, right? Maybe private room is a little bit, all right? Then, okay, all that toothbrush, all that uh, shampoos, the containers, okay. Of course, ideally, so you ca can you get rid of those disposable casings, okay? If you cannot get rid of it, okay, then can you try to reuse it again, right? Okay, if you cannot reuse it, okay, then can you recycle them again? I, can, after you recycle that, can you ask your guests to be part of that, to recycle that? And I think that is, um, and all that machinery is ready today. It's not a rocket science. It can be done. So it's not a complicated thing? It's not complicated at all. Imagine I'm a student of our university uh, listening to this show. Um, how can I, how could I get involved into being part of something like this? Uh, like imagine my bulb has come on and I said okay I, I would love to begin building build, doing buildings with recycled materials such as this um, how can I get involved into this uh, yeah uh, I think the first thing is um, just go to your trash can okay okay go to your trash can um, if you are in the a, a, a hospitality industry just go to see what your guest is throwing away Okay, because that is opportunities right there, right? So basically, it's uh, trash. It just means material being not used, mm. uh, no more use. Okay, out of use. So look at what is out of use. Okay, and then you, you, then you look at what can it be. To you have to have an imagination. What can it be, right? Then these days, what's the advantage of today is that you have all kinds of technology out there in the internet, already published, ready for you to copy, use. Don't be ashamed of just looking at different ideas and mimicking 
different things. So there's so many examples out there, even ours. We let people, welcome to copy, welcome, like, you know, do it, you know? So it's, it's no longer just purely about engineering. It's, it's really about, if you see the opportunity, you, you see, people see different opportunities. So, but if you see the opportunity in that trash can, people, what people throw away, and you, then you have imagination, and then you have all the resources to be able to make it real. Mm. The only thing that might be of a problem is just money, right? But if you have the right idea, normally, money shouldn't be a problem. Okay. You always get the person, yeah. the contact that will help you with yes, that money. exactly. Yeah. Um, then finally, as a country, as for we being a, a public university in this country, what can we do? What recommendations can you do to a public university to be also helpful with this? No, first thing is, um, I might ask, is like, do you guys recycle on campus? Yeah, we do. <laughs> okay, and what did you do with the recycled material? Well, we take it to a place that recycles it, but we still don't do it on campus. <laughs> okay, so, so the first thing is, as a university student, you guys should visit the supply chain. Yeah. You should actually follow the trash, how the current system is being pushed to. And you have to demand to see where that trash material went. This is the first thing, like, you know, this is a collective intellectual community, okay? And you have to be curious about where this material went. So I will bet you it goes to a collector's, and most of that collector sold to some third party, packed mm -hmm. and sold to third party. You don't know where they went. It could be in China, it could be in Taiwan, or it could be in India somewhere, a ship all the way across the world. That is again, a wasted resources, a perfectly good material being sent somewhere where it shouldn't be, okay? And for example, if you see that, then the university will see that as an opportunity for an engineering program to try to see what we can use with what we throw away as a university community and what we can do to come up with new application to use that material, right? And then that is, you know. Probably we tend to have a, a very little link, for example, between the people that is studying tourism and people is, that is studying engineer. We, we probably are not talking enough to each other, aren't we? That yeah. we are not connecting these ideas together. So in our office, for example, we are constantly putting um, people of different background into different team, mm -hmm. okay? So it's kind of like a force uh, melting of the disciplines, okay? If you're just engineering, you're just looking at material science, you will never be able to do some of the stuff that we are doing because to them, it's just too far away. Okay, so it's, a, it's very important for the tourism students and the engineering students to do projects together. Uh, for example, uh, let's make a hotel with a university trash. Just make one room with university trash. That could be a project already. And then that, the engineers has to come up with a solution to remake that. And then the hotel student has to be able to sell that in a sexy way, right? So that's already a um, great business uh, together, right? As an ecotourism. Well, thank you very much, Arthur, for this conversation. Uh, and uh, uh, good luck in Costa Rica. Pura vida, as yeah, we say. Pura vida. <laughs> thank you very much to all the people that has tuned in. But I, actually, just so you know, we don't actually really build with this stuff, right? This is the the shit of a shit. These are actually what we call as a base material. Our buildings are a lot crazier than this. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've seen photos. Uh, buildings are very crazy. So we use that and we turn it into like even crazier stuff because those are the, our base material, right? From the base material, I can transform that into all kinds of shapes, all kinds of performance requirements. You know, so this just requires melting or? Press. A press. Yeah, press okay. and melt. You heat it up and then you just press. Okay, but then you have to heat it up to a temperature that is not great. 180. 180 degrees. Yeah. And once it's there, press. you have the pressing. And the colors are just the original colors yes. of what was put in. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's, it's just, so it's, um, 
and we want to separate it. So this is one material, this is one material. So every batch is different material. So you don't mix material. So one machine can do different batch. It's like a washing machine. You're washing cotton, you turn it to cotton. You're washing uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. permanent press, you yeah, put yeah, permanent yeah, yeah, yeah. press. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So you have a presetting allows like, you know, different, the knife will change the, how uh, big the granule get cut into, okay. what temperature to set to, so you can't preset. Yeah, so that's, so then, because every plastic are slightly different in its uh, uh, optimal compositions. Just so like once you mix them, that's when you lose the original capabilities of the material, I guess. Yep. Okay. And you lose the, um, you yeah, know, because if this is very, PS is very light and brittle. Mm. Okay. And PE, you can bend this without ever break, right? So right. these are all different properties. PC is a super high impact strain and translucent. So, so. You see, like it's all has different properties, and the most expensive one, this one, right? In terms really? of the yeah, the P, P this is PC. PC has a higher highest fireproof standards. Okay, so this is really good for construction. Fire, yeah, so this is really good for you see all that is PC. You see the lamp you know, on top of that. That's that sort is, of plastic. Yeah, yeah, that is PC. Okay. That's not metal. That's PC, right? So you see, and this most likely is. PP, exactly. PP. PP. This is for this. Okay, so that's so, the same sort of. So I take this, I grind it down, okay, and then I can inject it into this. You see, that's already circular, no? So I take this is the bottle cap, I recycle, I melt it down, and then I turn that into this. And that's already, this is the intermediate step. Mm. Between so, the source and the yeah, final product. Yeah, yeah, you have to be able to transport very quickly. So you sell this, like you collect, you sell this to the next one that is the one that makes the final product. Yeah. We could, yes. Okay. And so well, what, what we try to ambition is we try to buy this from people. Mm. So if I have, I'm actually trying to donate a lot of the machine. So we're trying to, right now our uh, initiative is to make our trash pressing machine smaller, tiny. We are making it so tiny that it's almost like a fridge. I can just like, oh, uh, your university, I can just like put two next to your cafeteria. And so people are just like throwing this thing and compress it. And I can go buy this from you. And I can use that as a building material, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's how you close it up. Yeah. The pressing machine with the, yeah. with the, with the, with the, with the place where people dispose of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and then ideally, you want to have the manufacturing lab already in your university. Mm. So there's no transport. So the idea, like the business model is you have these machines, you sell them, and then you buy the product from the machine. Yeah, but we don't sell the machine, actually. Okay. We just lend you to use it. Oh, okay, and, it's kind uh, of like a, and, and the machine, uh, who makes it or how can you get the machine? Oh, we make them right now. Oh, you are That's making it. But, but I mean, technically you can make it yourself too. Okay, so you have like a, an open source of how to yeah. build the machine. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, we have, uh, we have an open source, our machine manufacturing. But first, we open first is our material data. Because the first thing is, you have to be able to think with this new material and design with this new material, right? Yeah, knowing the capability. Yeah, yeah, capability. Then you can start the system, yeah.